Hello internet, it is I, Malik Aaron Aaron, and welcome back to Box Office Predictions. Today we're going to be talking about Drive Away Dolls. So as usual, we're going to be going over the pros and cons, so let's get to it. Pros! This is from one half of the Cohen brothers, specifically Ethan Cohen, which is weird because there's technically another Ethan Cohen out there. In Hollywood, but the thing is, is that their last names are different because one of these Coens has an H in their last names. Like, that's the other Cohen, not related to the Cohen brothers, okay? That's actually, fun fact, that is actually how Bill Murray accidentally got the role of Garfield. Because <laughs> he thought, you know... He was talking to the Cohen brothers, one of the Cohen brothers, but he was actually talking to another guy who happened to have the same name except with one extra letter. So I just wanted to bring that up because that story will always be funny to me. <laughs> but um Yeah, so Ethan Cohen, you know, him and uh Joel Cohen, the Cohen brothers, they have a pretty solid legacy, if you ask me. I mean they made a lot of stuff together. I mean, one could argue their first, you know, big, I guess, well, not really big, but like, trying to think. Um, I guess the first notable movie really was Fargo back in 1996. I mean, it was technically Raising Arizona, but more people remember Fargo. And then after that, there's stuff like Big Lebowski, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? I don't know about Intolerable Cruelty. I don't know if that has a great reputation. Was it even made by them? I'm not sure. Was it them? It was them. Okay. That one's kind of like whatever. The Lady Killers was a bit of a bust for them cre uh, creatively. They have No Country for Old Men, Burn After Reading, you know, some real bangers right there. True Grit, also their biggest, the biggest movie they ever made. Um, they got a serious man inside Lewin Davis. Those didn't do that great. They didn't do like terrible. They just didn't do great. They got Hail Caesar, which did meh, okay ish. Suburbicon, well, they didn't make it, although it very much feels like it. But that movie was a disaster. And Ballad of Buster Scruggs, that was a Netflix movie, so I'm not going to be talking about that. It's no point. But yeah. When it comes to the Coen brothers, like their legacy with movies, they have a really strong legacy. A lot of these movies are considered to be like classics or modern day classics. You know, strong, strong movies. So yeah, I would label Ethan Cohen's, you know, track record as a pro. Definitely a pro. Um Another pro is that the cast here is, uh, you got some notable names in here. Uh, I have to find them. I don't know about the, the main two, like Margaret Qualley. What has she been in? Anything notable? Well, not really here. Nothing like super notable. Well, I guess there's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but that's probably a very minor role. So, nothing really to say about that. Um, I don't know about Gerald. Oh, I don't even. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Uh, yeah, really nothing there. Oh, I guess there's blockers. I don't even know. Like, I can't, Well, that was like a long ass time ago. That was like 2018. <laughs> uh, so not that. Um. So nothing really. Her. There's Pedro Pascal. We all know who he is at this point. He is everywhere now. He's he's like the plague. He's like Taylor Swift. You can't escape him, no matter how hard you try. But yeah, this dude is everywhere, especially the last few years. He's all over the place. I mean, The Last of Us, and then soon he'll be in Gladiator 2. And then next year he'll be in Fantastic Forest, Reed Richards, and Mr. Fantastic... He is everywhere, and one could definitely label that as a bad thing. One could label that as overexposure. Overexposure is never good, <laughs> because the more you see... If you see too much of one person, you're going to get sick of them, and you want them to go away. And I feel like 
Pedro Pascal's kind of in like the danger zone of that. <laughs> so, yeah, but he's still a recognizable name. And there's also Matt Damon. Matt Damon. <laughs> Of course, I have to. I have to say it like that because of Team America. <laughs> just the way they said it was just so perfect. Uh, but Matt Damon, I don't. I can't imagine he has a big role in this movie. But I might as well talk about him because why not? Matt Damon, he's been a bunch of stuff. Way too much stuff. It's it's kind of insane. <laughs> but yeah, Go- Good Will Hunting, like that was like his real breakout movie. Is that? Saving Private Ryan, Town and Mr. Ripley, Ryan Norris, some of these other movies here. Oceans 11, 12, 13. Uh, Born Identity, the Born movies. Identity, Supremacy, uh, Ultimatum, Jason Bourne from 2016. Uh, the Departed. Uh, scroll into this list. True Grit. Contagion, the most important movie of the 2010s, if you ask me, considering what happened the next decade. Um, I guess there's Adjustment Bureau, We Bought a Zoo, but those weren't like big hits or important movies. Elysium did whatever. Money is, Monuments Men did fine, I guess. Interstellar, I don't think he had a huge role. That was made in the Matthew McConaughey show. The Martian, huge hit. For Matt Damon. That's his biggest hit. I believe it. it and actually, no, it's Oppenheimer. But Matt Matt Damon was the star of the show for The Martian. And look at that Suburbicon. You know. Yeah, ugh. We, we don't talk about it. 2017, that was a bad year to be Matt Damon. <laughs> he had three bombs, one after another. It was it was rough. And you got Ford v. Ferrari, which did all right. And then last year, Oppenheimer just you know, I don't need, I don't need to explain that one. <laughs> so yeah, Matt Damon, everyone knows who he is. Very recognizable. But I don't think he's gonna have much of a he's gonna play much of a role in this movie. Because I feel like he's just there to be an extended cameo and nothing more. Kind of like what he did with I think it was what was it Euro Trip? I think it was Euro Trip. I will check. I'm pretty sure it was that. I'm positive. Let me go back to his track record. I feel like I skipped it. I will find it. Euro trip. Where is it? There it is. Where he's literally just an extended cameo. Where he's like shaved head, piercings, like the, the, the it's the weirdest visual of Matt Damon, and he literally sings a song about how he fucked you know like a girl. And the main character is girl. Like, that's what he did. <laughs> it was amazing. But, yeah, he's probably the most recognizable name here. So, you got some recognizable names. So, I'm going to label that as a pro. Aldi. It's more of a minor pro. Another con. Not another con. Another pro. Another pro I can think of is that reviews, at least the critic score is fine. 66%. That's not bad. I will go over the audience score when we get to the cons, okay? I'm not going to ignore that. But critic score, I can't label that as a con. 66%. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Far from terrible. It's not It's not like Madam Web. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to label that critic score as a pro. And another pro is that when it comes to direct competition, there really isn't anything out there really everything is just old and dead and like the other two movies coming out this weekend aren't exactly you know barn burners so um it's a very very slow weekend so i guess you could label that as a, a pro i guess yeah i guess that's it with that um I'm not going to label this as a pro or a con. It depends on how you feel, I guess. Kind of like a personal preference type of thing. Um, but the fact that the movie is, you know, very much, you know, our main characters are lesbians. Okay, literally. Like, <laughs> that's kind of the reason why it's called, like, this. it's the title of the movie. Kind of why it's called that. Well, 
actually, I don't know if I can say the original name of the movie, what it was originally called when I was like way back in development. I don't know if I can say that. I feel like I'm going to get in trouble <laughs> saying that. But you know what? Screw it. I'm, I'm going to take the risk because that's what it says on its Wikipedia page. So, I mean, it's what it was supposed to be called. But I will... I want to make sure I get I got this right. Drive away dolls. Um. Yeah, it was supposed to be called um. Uh, drive away uh dykes. That was the original name. Uh, so you kind of understand why they might want to change that. <laughs> um, but it was like the same concept, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, having, like, very much, like, lesbian characters, like, and the main, as main characters, not just, like, side characters, or basically what Disney does, where they just plop an LGBT character on screen for, like, five seconds, be like, there is your representation. It's not like that. They're front and center here, which is a lot better <laughs> but i don't know some people might not care about that some people will care about that i don't know depends on you um but i'm um, i'm not gonna label it as a pro or a con just want to uh, label just talk about that for a little bit okay um now for actual cons um See, the critic score for this movie is fine. The audience score, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it is one of the worst audience scores I've seen in a long time. Maybe ever, honestly. As a 35% audience score, 35. <laughs> Let me repeat that. 35% audience score. And its cinema score is a C. So word of mouth, the people who have seen this movie, word of mouth is uh, shit. It's just shit. People who have seen this movie just don't like it. I don't know why exactly. I am, haven't seen it. I have no plans to see it. I'm not interested. But I'm guessing it's, you know, I'm kind of a little afraid to read the ratings for this movie. But I'm going to see. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to dive in and see what happens. <laughs> Oh, trailer was misleading. Oh, we could have a, this could be a case of false advertising. <laughs> what did I just watch? Trailer was better than the movie. Uh, waste of money. <laughs> um, uh, blah, blah, blah. It says hideous accents, <laughs> hideous accents and mediocre banter dominate this bland retread of better crime and road trip movies. This movie had trash comedy and the story wasn't great. Uh, oh boy, there's a reference to a, a sex scene. You know how sex scenes in movies are nowadays. A lot of people see them as just gratuitous, it's just a waste of time. They do nothing for the plot. And I kind of agree. Like, they just, they're just they just there just to be there. <laughs> There's no, like, narrative reason they're there. Like, you might as well just have a black screen. <laughs> um, but I'm reading this. Oh, this is a half star. Not even a full star. Half star. It says, graphic lesbian sex scenes were unnecessary. Seemed as if it were for shock value and did not add to the plot in any way. Left the show at 30 minutes. Disgusted. Oh, this person definitely didn't have a good time. Um, so, yeah, audience reactions are terrible. Absolutely terrible. Word of mouth is trash. So, I'm going to label that as a con, definitely. Um... Another con I can think uh well the fact that this movie was doomed to be niche like just the, the way it looks feels the plot the cast everything it all was niche 
It was doomed to be niche. It was never going to be mainstream, even remotely mainstream. It was always going to be a small movie. And it never was never able to escape that and become like an event or anything close to that. It's just, it was doomed to be small. So, yeah, it's niche status. It's very much niche status. I'm going to label that as a con. So that's con number two. Con number three... You know, this weekend, I mean, there's a lot of options. There's a decent amount of options to choose from. This is definitely going to be on the bottom of everybody's list of movies to watch. But then next weekend, we have Dune Part 2. That movie is going to tear through all these old movies. <laughs> I, I'm i convinced of it. Because Dune Part 2 is positioned as the first event of 2024. The first movie that will get people to actually go to the theater in mass. Well, not just like a, you know, it, it's it's going to have a negative effect on everything else. Like Doom Part 2 is going to do, do great. Everything else is going to suffer. And I feel like this is going to suffer real bad. So Doom Part 2, the inevitable arrival of that, I'm going to label that as a uh, a con. Uh, try to think of some other cons. I guess, I mean, I label, like, the main stuff, the main issues. But yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I guess, like, maybe just the lack of advertising, lack of, like, major advertising. I mean, I've seen some ads here and there, but they're just kind of whatever. It doesn't feel like they put much effort into it. So, I'm going to label that as a con, just lackluster ad campaign. And this movie didn't have, like, pre well, it did, but it was never, never reported. Period. <laughs> so that's concerning. So the lack, the fact that I didn't even get preview numbers for this, that's a con. And I think that's it. So opening weekend, um, looking at its early numbers for the weekend, it's looking real grim, even grimmer than Lisa Frankenstein. I didn't think that was possible, <laughs> but here we are. I'm going to say two to three million opening weekend and a final total of five to six million. And then that's it. So one more movie to discuss this weekend, and that is uh, Ordinary Angels. Then we're done for this dry, sad <laughs> weekend. This is a weekend to sleep. It really is. Hell, the, let me, the, honestly, the last two months have just been nonstop sleep. For moviegoers, like it's just it's better if you just stay home, unless you really care about like a movie, like say a Mean Girls or a Beekeeper or a Bob Marley. <laughs> but Doom Part Two, that's gonna wake everyone the fuck up. <laughs> like that is going to, <laughs> that is gonna drive people to the cinema. But that won't be till next week. So, yeah, until then we're we're stuck with a bunch of bleh movies. <laughs> So it's not a fun time, but yeah, so that's it. That's all. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, turn notification, turn notification, share the whole drill. I'll check on more videos like this. I got playlists on the homepage, all previous uh, prediction videos I've made on the channel for this year. You want to watch any of those, any of the ones I've done the past few years, you can go right ahead. There's also box office. Um... No, it's the, the canceled series where I go over all the movies that were supposed to come out but didn't. I've talked about Driveway Dolls like one other time. And that was episode only one time. That was uh, episode 201. Where th this was supposed to come out in uh, September. That was the plan. But then uh, the strikes happened. The writer strike, actor strike at the same time. And I guess the studio was like, it probably isn't a good idea to do that. Maybe we should, you know, push it to February. I guess because they thought they had something, but I guess they took another look at it and were just like, oh, you know, maybe not. <laughs> so, yeah, I talked about Driveaway Dolls alongside Dumb Money, Distant, Unsung Heroes, apparently some, a bunch of other movies. All of Us Strangers, Foe, Dream Scenario, and The Marsh King's Daughter. Very lackluster lineup, to say the least. Um, so yeah, that was the one time I talked about the movie. But now I made 235 episodes. The most recent one I did was about Mickey 17, 
of the crow ballerina and an untitled guy Ritchie movie so you want to watch that or any other ones i've done the channel uh you want to binge them all from beginning to now i highly encourage you do that so go do it there's also box office uh recaps where i go over the box office results for a particular month my march recap not my march february recap won't be till the first real week of march between doom part two and kung fu panda 4 between that period of time so stay tuned for that but if you want to watch any of the past recap videos of man the channel you can go right ahead and yeah that's it that's all i am out goodbye